PixInsight has a new script called Image Blend, which allows you to relatively easily combine images with different traits. It's good to see PixInsight coming into the third decade of the 21st century. But if you think of PixInsight more like Lightroom is to Photoshop or Capture One is to Affinity Photo as an image preparer, then you quickly realize that image blending, well, it's been around forever and it's very easily accomplished with layer-based photo editors. There's no secrets involved and the layer-based method is much more powerful. And in the next few minutes, I'm just gonna show you how to do it. Anybody who's been watching my videos knows that I prefer to work with Affinity Photo. I also like Photoshop. Photoshop's very powerful and Affinity Photo and Photoshop are almost equal in power. The big difference is Affinity Photo costs a one-time fee of $100. It's often on sale for 50 to 70, that's US dollars. And Photoshop costs 20, 30 bucks a month. So you pick your poison. So what you're seeing here is dual band data that I took of the interior of the Heart Nebula back in August of 2023. This represents about nine hours on the target. It was a good night. There was very little moonlight. And I live in a dark sky region. The portal here is, call it 1.5, give or take. Just depends really on how much humidity there happens to be and what the seeing is overall. But this was a pretty good image. However, it's a bit fuzzy. So two nights ago, we had a crystal clear night and there was about a one third moon visible, but it was about 50 degrees away from the Heart Nebula. So it was a good time to revisit the Heart Nebula and this time shoot broadband data. And as at my location in Canada, we had about 11 hours of night, I was able to get many hours on the target. And there were a few clouds up until around 10 p.m. But after that, I was able to go from 10 p.m. all the way till nautical dawn at 6.30. So 8.5 hours on the target. And this target was shot with a Williams Optic Zenith Star 81mm APO refractor and an uncooled Player One Uranus C one shot color camera. That has a 585 MC sensor that's good for about 8.3 megapixels, plenty to make a 4K image and to spare. During the August dual band shoot, which is the image you are seeing now, is using a ZWO dual band filter. And during the shoot two nights ago, I was using a ZWO UVIR cut filter, which helps with focusing. So on that night, two nights ago, I got this image. This is broadband data only. As you can see right off the bat, the broadband data is sharper, but much different in many other qualities than the dual band data. And this is because capturing broadband data, we are getting more information overall, especially with an OSC, a one-shot color camera. But yeah, our final color outcome will be affected. We have saturation differences, luminance differences, overall hue differences, and this image on its own is okay. Just like the dual band image, they're okay. But if I want to salvage all of that data, all the data from both images and combine them and make the maximum quality image that I can, well, I'm going to have some problems because I am trying to blend two very different images. If you've ever tried to blend very different images in PixInsight's mosaic tools, often the images end up looking like prints that have been patched together, especially once you start developing those images, stretching the histograms, working with curves, and making other editing changes. Fortunately, if we push out into a layer-based photo editor, these things become not quite trivial issues, but they become easily managed. All right, let's jump into the meat of this process. So now I'm working with the broadband data that I captured two nights ago. I've already run Blur, Noise, and Star Exterminator on it, removed a deconvolved star plate, and set that aside for use later. And now I'm going to prep the tableau of the image of the nebula for use in our layer-based photo editor. PixInsight has a superbly implemented curves transformation tool. It is my absolute most favorite thing about PixInsight. I know some people are thinking, that's your most favorite thing. But I tell you, you know, if you understand curves theory, you can accomplish almost anything in the curves tool and typically do it with a lot less trouble than using other tools. So anyway, I'm going to take advantage of PixInsight's wonderful histogram transformation tool and its incredible curves transformation tool and prepare this plate for use in our layer-based editing application, in this case, Affinity Photo. I'll start with a quick histogram transformation, which will retain all of the data, not clip anything, and give us a nice flat finished outcome, ideal for working with in the curves transformation tool and for working with in other photo editors. And if you're curious how to do this, take a look at the video that I'll link here. When that's done, we'll adjust the curves and get a final image that's about what we want to work with in Affinity Photo. 
When we have the final curves adjustment, we'll export this image as a TIFF and then go ahead and get ready to work on the dual band image taken last August. For those who have followed my videos on the Aesthetic Development Protocol, I am using that here. So the way that works is, I ran Blur Exterminator, then Noise Exterminator, then Star Exterminator, and extracted a deconvolved star plate, stretched the histogram on it, adjusted the saturation if need be. Then, on the plate with the nebula, I undid all those changes taking that plate back to the point just after running photometric color calibration, and then ran star exterminator only to remove the stars. This reveals the structure, in this case the nebula, at which time I can stretch the histogram and then adjust the curves and anything else to prepare that image for working with later in the layer-based photo editor. Now I'm going to prepare the dual bend image from August in the exact same way. I'll stretch the histogram and then run a curves transformation and export the image as a TIFF for working with Next in the layer-based photo editor. Now I'm going to make this whole process extra hard on myself for the simple purpose of showing you how easy this whole thing is. You see, I could have star-aligned those two images in PixInsight so that I could have very easily overlain those two images as separate plates or layers in Affinity Photo. Instead, I'm going to manually align these two images in Affinity Photo. It's not hard at all. And I'll begin by creating a very large background in Affinity Photo in which to work. Affinity Photo needs a background upon which you place your layers. I've made a 12,000 by 12,000 pixel background, which you can see is huge. It gives plenty of space for the layers we're going to be working with. I've dragged the broadband data onto the background, and now I'm going to drag the matching star plate onto the background. The star plate will snap perfectly into place over the broadband plate. Then I'm going to drag the dual band layer as a new layer into our tableau and drag the matching stars over the dual band plate. Now I'll set both star plates to the screen composites option, or as it's known in Affinity Photo, blend mode, which will allow the brights or the stars to show through and make the black background vanish so that we can see the stars. Now I'm going to manually and perfectly align both these plates. It's really not that hard. The stars are going to serve as our guides. We do need to move each group, the dual band plate with its dual band stars and the broadband plate with its broadband stars. We need to move these groups together. So I'm going to put each nebula and star plate pair into a group. I'll layer one group, dual group, and I'll layer the other group, broad group. Now, I'm going to move the lower group, the dual band group, up and rotate it so that it roughly matches the position of the broadband group. And setting the dual band group to the screen composites or blend mode, will allow us to see the other group underneath so that we can more easily align them. We'll zoom in so that we can roughly align even more precisely. And I'm using my structures as the initial alignment device. But then, as I get closer to perfect alignment, I'm using the stars. Stars are very useful here. Matching them up serves like bullseyes. Now that we are very close to our final alignment, I'm going to switch the blend mode, or composite mode yet again, to contrast negate. This is going to make the upper stars black and very small, and make the lower stars white, but leave their size unchanged. Ultimately, this means the stars of the lower plate will serve like bullseyes for the stars of the upper plate, and we can zoom in down to the pixel if we want, allowing a fast and easy perfect alignment. When the alignment is done, it's time to get to the real work, blending these two very different images in a way that they match seamlessly. The first thing I'm going to do is deactivate the stars from both plates because now I want to focus on the color qualities of the structures. Blending the stars will be much easier. Star plates are basically just black space and bright dots. Now I especially like the look of the broadband plate. It's where most of the information is captured and the detail is best. So I want to match the dual band plate to the broadband plate. I'm going to use the curves tool to match the colors of the dual band plate to the broadband plate. Primarily, I'm going to darken but enrich the reds and darken the space. Then, when they roughly match, I'm going to change the compositing or blend mode of Affinity Photo to a blend mode that carries over the essential information from the dual band plate while minimizing the borders between the two plate where they come together. Center upper right is the blend mode menu, and each individual tool also has its own blend mode menu, lower right. But part of the beauty of Affinity Photo, why this process is so fast and elegant and easy, is we can quickly look through the various blend modes and decide on the one that works best. In this case, the average blend or composite mode. The average mode combines all the traits of sharpness and saturation and luminance and hue, 
giving us an overlay that has the potential for all the traits that we're after and minimizes the boundaries between the two plates. Now on the Erase tool, I'm going to set the flow to 20% and the hardness to zero so the Erase tool is soft. And then with the broadband plate selected, that's where the problem is. We have that dark bar, which is an artifact left over from blending three different sets of broadband data from that night, since I shot this nebula at three different times and offsets as the shooting conditions changed. But with the broadband plate selected, I'm just going to erase out the bar, which softens the transition between the borders. You can still see it, but it's going to disappear, believe me, as we move further along in this editing process, and it won't be hard to make it disappear. Then I'm going to select the dual band plate and erase out the borders of the dual band plate where it overlaps the broadband plate at the upper and the right borders. Now I'm going to reactivate the star layers on both plates and with the star layers corrected, I can see that the transitional differences between the plates is almost nullified. The star layers are screened over the layers and the screening has a way of mitigating the effects of flaws in lower areas. So now it's time to crop the image. What I really want and what I want to emphasize are the structures, lower left center and center of the image. And so I'm going to crop to emphasize them and use the outer structures as a kind of composition framing tool to direct the eye to the center and the lower left center. Now we'll open a curves tool on the dual band layer and adjust the brightness and color qualities to match the broadband image. Now I'm going to make both star plates invisible and export the visible image, which is our nebula structure, as a TIFF. I will import this TIFF back into PixInsight one more time and run Noise Exterminator, which will clean up all of that chrominance noise and luminance noise. And then, this time using the Blur Exterminator as its namesake implies, as a Blur Exterminator, I'm going to run the Blur Exterminator on the image to sharpen up everything. Blur Exterminator's powerful AI will do a beautiful job. However, as we have very delicate transitions of contrast and color, I'm going to set Blur Exterminator to operate only on the luminance channel. This will keep the Blur Exterminator from making chrominance-based artifacts throughout the image that would have to be cleaned up later. This properly denoised and sharpened image is then imported back into Affinity Photo as a new layer which is placed on top, just below the two star layers. For now, we'll leave the star layers invisible. Now there is just one small task still to perform. See the bright little points of light? Those are artifacts left over from Star Exterminator. In Affinity Photo, they are very easy to remove. We'll select the in-painting brush and literally just paint them out of the scene. Affinity Photo will use its artificial intelligence to select from the surroundings the detail that closest matches where those artifacts were, remove the artifacts, and seamlessly fill in the new detail. There's just one last thing to deal with. We have two star plates that are partially overlapping, and each star plate is using the screen blend or composite mode. And we don't want that. It'll make the stars in the middle region where they overlap overly bright. So we'll just select the dual band star plate and erase out its stars in the regions where they overlap. Then we'll group the dual and broadband star plates, select the brightness contrast tool, place it over both those plates so it affects both of them equally, and dim the stars overall so that we can emphasize the beautiful structures within the heart nebula. And now we have our finished image. A final image in which we have been able to define the exact and precise qualities by which we want saturation, hue, sharpness, and contrast to blend, how we want the compositing between the images to define what's important, and the brightness and detail of the stars that show through. This entire process is not that complicated, and it is far, far more powerful. And it allows you to work with multiple photos, really as many as you want in a single tableau. And each layer can be developed to maximize its attributes, the importance of which we have covered in previous videos, such as the video, Use Layers to Handle Very Different Structures Within an Image, Fix a Mosaic When PixInsight Fails, and Treat a Single Image Like Two Separate Shots to Improve Color and Detail. Going about our developing this way has allowed us to maximize the appearance of the stars, improve the sharpness and clarity of the entire image, and seamlessly blend a mosaic of two very mismatched images, which not only were shot with very different filters, but which were also shot without the slightest thought to later blending them together into a mosaic so their orientation was really off from one another. So I'm going to keep advocating for the use of PixInsight the way Lightroom is used to Photoshop and capture one to Affinity Photo as a place to prepare images by way of stacking, histogram transformation, curves transformation, and sometimes alignment and mosaic creation. 
but then export out of PixInsight and go into a layer-based photo editor where you can make very fine and extremely powerful final edits to an image to bring the most out of it in the way of retaining all the information and capturing all that beauty. As always, thanks for watching and thanks for helping this channel to grow so fast. And if you like what you see here, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Now, get out there and shoot the sky.